Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and join me today while we take a glimpse into the future, especially the future of Blender. You see, Blender Foundation released an outline yesterday of what they're going to be working on in 2023 and we are going to take a look and we're going to start hands-on. There's something you can actually check out today, especially if you have a Mac, but this will be of impact to you if you're using Windows as well. And what you're seeing is a bit of a demonstration. This is a uh, 2021 MacBook Pro Max 24 GPU cores uh, running inside of Blender, and the number I want you to focus on right now is this one right here. So this EV scene is currently playing back at a 4.8 frames per second frame rate. So why is this relevant to anything? Well, one of the most exciting new features of Blender coming next year is this. So you can now go into your preferences. Uh, you can go into system over here, and what you will notice is two new options. Here you have cycles render device. Uh, you can switch to metal. Uh, this has already been a thing in the past. I don't believe this is actually new, but what is new is this GPU back ends. Now I should point out, this is actually Blender 3.5 alpha. No way, ready for prime time at all, but this is going to be coming later this year. So right now, the only back end we have available is OpenGL. But what you're going to see here is if you are on a Mac today, you can choose Metal. Now, if you're on a Windows device, they're also working on a Vulkan back end. Now, if you do not know Vulkan, Vulkan is basically a replacement for OpenGL. Going forward, it's going to be harder and harder to run devices with OpenGL drivers. You're going to want to switch over to Vulkan. Also, as a general rule of thumb, you normally see a 20 to 30% increase in performance when you're dealing with Vulcan. But let's see what this new back end, this one is actually being created by Apple engineers. Uh, so we're going to switch to the metal back end. Unfortunately, this does require a reboot. So let's go ahead. We will quit Blender. And then we're going to, we're not saving that guy. And we're going to run the exact same project the exact same way. And let's see what kind of frame rate we get. Again, 3.5 alpha. I'm going to open up that project. This is one of the demo scenes you can get uh, from the Blender Foundation, by the way. So it's called Mr. Elephant. We will open that one up, not load its UI and go ahead and load it. So this is going to take a couple of seconds because it's going to need to load the shader. So once I switch over here into EV mode, you're going to see it's got to load about 120 shaders. We'll let it go ahead and do that. Uh, one thing to note is I actually found the compiling of shaders was significantly faster with the metal back end. I don't know if that was just uh, my observation or not. Now we're going to do an exact apples to apples comparison. So I'm going to switch this guy over to the camera view like so. We're going to zoom it in. Oops, not pan it. We're going to zoom it roughly the same size as what we had before. So I'm going to zoom it out a little bit. That way we can actually see the uh, um, the frame rate easily. So let's undo my panning. We'll zoom that guy in. All right, so now let's go ahead and play this scene and let's see what kind of a framework we were going to get, or sorry, frame rate we will get with the new metal back end. So let's go ahead and play that. And yeah, 12, 13 frames per second. So you're literally... Um, you know, doubling your frame rate here or almost doubling your frame rate. So that is going to be a significant improvement going forward. Uh, you're going to see that this is the only way I can get metrics. By the way, if you do know a way of actually just tracking the frame rate that you get uh, in normal viewport, like in, in this guy itself, I would love to actually know it because uh, I don't actually know how to do so. So if you know a way uh, to actually show the frames per second of the viewport and not while playing animations, I would love to have that little bit of knowledge for future and uh, for future videos. But you're going to see here, again, a pretty sizable jump in frame rate, 50 to 100% more frames uh, just from switching the GPU back end. And hopefully we will see something very similar when the Vulkan back ends come online. So I think the new GPU back ends are by far and away the most interesting new thing about this, uh, but there is a ton going on here. So let's go through what they're talking about that is going to be upcoming, hopefully in 2023. So these, some of these things are going to be delivered in 2023, and some of these we're going to get, you know, betas of in 2023. So the first thing we just talked about pretty extensively right there is we are going to get a Vulkan and Metal back end. Now, Vulkan is a little bit further down the road. So if you are on a Linux machine or a Windows machine and you're hoping to take advantage of this new back end, uh, they're going to, um, as you can see here, uh, many opportunities to improve performance, new features like ray tracing. Uh, Blender Foundation will invest deeper development time to finish a migration to the Vulkan API in 2023. So they're going to definitely put more resources into it, but this one is a little further down the road. Meanwhile, Apple engineers have been working on making Blender fully compatible with the Metal API. Project is also expected to wrap up in 2023. So this one, the... Uh, 
the metal backend, as you just saw, is available in the uh, Apple 3.5 Alpha. So you, if you want to go ahead in time, check the Alpha out. You can see how the metal backend performs for you. I do not think the Vulcan is available yet, but it might be in its own branch. Uh, but that's going to be a little bit further down the road. But those new GPU backends are going to make a huge difference. Again, 50 to 100% more frames is what I saw, and that's pretty impressive. And that's in the early Alpha version that is still in development. Uh, another thing that we're going to see in the future is real-time viewport compositing. So, you know, the compositing stuff that you could do normally, it's a back-end process. Now you're going to be able to see it. It's going to be GPU accelerated directly in the 3D viewport. So you're going to be able to uh, play with the real-time compositor in, well, ironically enough, real-time. Uh, we've got brush assets coming in place. I'll come back to this in just a little bit more. But basically, there's going to be this new asset system that they're improving on. And one of the things is going to be brushes for painting and sculpting. We have a bit of a reference. Uh, this guy right here we'll look at in just a second. Okay, we accidentally will look at it right now. Uh, that shows you how these new uh, things will be set up. Another aspect is Blender apps. I actually covered Blender apps in an earlier video. Basically, this is a way of using Blender as a host for dedicated apps that you build on top of the Blender foundation, uh, Blender framework. Uh, these new apps are going to be... Um, I don't know. I don't know how well that's going to take off, but basically you can use Blender as a host for applications and take advantage of its underlying uh, stuff, but you kind of can ship it as a single click executable. You can send out to customers if you want to make a dedicated 3D file viewer or something to send along with your assets. You can now build it as a Blender app. There's also going to be work on the extensions platform. Uh, we we'll launch a community moderated website for sharing, discovering, and downloading add-ons, themes, and asset libraries. Uh, extensions will only offer GPL software or CC by SA compatible content. Uh, no commercialization at all here. So basically, it's going to be a website for hosting uh, extensions, assets, and so on. So I think it's going to be kind of like a sketch fab slash... Uh, add-on hosting thing, sort of like Blender Market, but everything there is free. Uh, so interesting there. Uh, then we've got uh, EV Next. EV is the real-time rendering uh, that we just actually saw in the viewport. It, it's a replacement of the old system. It gives you much better effects in, in your viewport. Your um, rendering quality is much closer to what you're actually going to get, especially if you're working in like a game environment. It'll look more like what your game engine is. While well, they're going to be a new version of it, so EV was first launched in Blender 2.8. So the goal is to make Make it uh, viable for both asset creation and final rendering and to support a, a wider range of workflows. The final rendering is actually going to be kind of interesting to actually render out of EV instead of having to go into something like cycles. And hopefully the quality will be almost on par. Uh, thanks to the latest hardware innovations, many new techniques have become viable and EV can take advantage of them. So new features include things like screen space, global illumination, more efficient shading and lighting, improved volume rendering and panoramic cameras. Also, I think with the new Vulcan and metal backends, you probably also see uh, more ray tracing effect stuff come in there as well. Geometry nodes, again, were the sexy new feature of last year. I think geometry nodes and sculpting were the two areas where Blender really uh, jumped forward in the last uh, couple releases. Uh, they got hair support at the end of the year. This year, they're going to focus on simulation for physics and beyond, system designed for interactivity and experimentation, with simulations running in the viewport at their own clock while editing objects. Uh, and the uh, development side of things, they're upgrading to Gitia. Gitia is like a private version of Git for making and hosting your your own repositories and then they've got some work going on with their character animation system this was announced a little while back there is a document there uh, we've got some other stuff going on here as well so grease pencil is more work on the uh, 2d side of things here uh, hydro render delicates and other usd or universal scene description uh, improvements are under development so that is the nutshell of what blender is working on again i think the one that really has me most excited is these new gpu backends especially if we see a consistent 50 to 100 percent performance boost because that's one of the areas where EV has much higher fidelity, uh, but we definitely have lost some frames over the date. So uh, hopefully this and EV Next or EV2 or whatever you want to go ahead and call it, uh, when EV Next comes into place, hopefully we just see just across the board performance improvements. And I look forward to that. So there is some more detail. You could drill down and learn more about some of these things that they're working on. So for example, if you're more interested in the new brush system, they're going to be implementing a new shelf. Like so when you're sculpting, this is a mock-up of what the UI may look like. Uh, the new asset system should make it simpler to share brushes with other people or to download it from that universal site that they are creating. And here is how you go about using them. If you're using them in the painting or sculpting system, a variety of brushes will be available across the bottom, like a traditional painting application approach. So as improvements they are making on the brush side of things, uh, I accidentally opened this twice during this video. Uh, next up, we have um, 
the future of character animation. I'm not going to get into this, uh, and there's not really a ton here. Now, one thing to know uh, is that on the animation side of things, there was a lot of funding. Was it Ubisoft? Somebody gave them a ton of money to work on animation specifically. Uh, so there is a team working behind it. You can see the principles that they're working towards, trying to just kind of simplify the animation process. Um, just do an overhaul of animation to make it more intuitive, easier to work with. So you can get some ideas of the kind of stuff that they are looking to improve. So instead of the old workflow, this is hopefully the new workflow they are coming up with. Uh, again, this is very early on. So we don't know exactly what shape the animation changes are going to make. Just know that there's a fairly large team working on overhauling the animation system in general. Uh, we also have procedural textures, another area that they are working on. Again, this is purely at the concept stage right now. I think you're going to see uh, more or less textures kind of getting this same treatment the geometry node did, which is going to give you a lot more flexibility and power in the ton of textures that you can create procedurally within Blender. Again, very early on at this point in time. And I did mention earlier on Blender apps. So if you want to build your own applications or tools on top of Blender itself, I did a previous video on that. If you wish to learn more, that is a good place to check out. Uh, and then another final thing to point out, uh, the video I did today, I was using the 3.5 Alpha, specifically this one here for the Apple Silicon. So if you want to check out what the new GPU backends feel like today and you have metal, I would highly recommend going ahead to check that out. I do not think that the Alpha for Intel has the Vulcan in it yet, uh, but you may be able to find that in a separate um branch or, or so there, there are branch versions available here uh, you may be able to find um a Vulcan build. I don't see one specifically about it. So uh, you may have to hunt that down from another source. So Vulcan isn't as easy to play with right now as it is for uh, the Mac OS version. The 3.5 version is out there uh, with metal. So if you want to go ahead and test it out, see if you get the kind of primary improvements that I got. Uh, but that one, again, is the one that I'm most excited about. And finally, the assets I used are available from the Blender download section, uh, the EV section right here. So if you want to go ahead and check out the exact same thing, apples for apples performance, I downloaded it right here. I think it's about a 30 megabyte download, uh, but Blender make a ton of uh, scene files available. So you want to go ahead and check that out. They also have all their various different splash screens available here. The, like the scene file used to generate the splash screens. If you want to go ahead and download those, all those are available right there. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. So that is the near term future of Blender in 2023. Again, the thing I'm most excited about is these new GPU backends uh, and then maybe EV next. I kind of think EV next and the GPU backends kind of go hand in hand, uh, but Better performance in the editor is what I need more than anything else. I find um, it, it's, especially when it comes to animation, the performance isn't good enough. Uh, so I do think that that is going to be a huge step forward and it's going to future proof the application, of course. Uh, but uh, real time compositing is nice. The new brush asset system is nice. The apps is kind of situational for sure. A new platform for sharing everything that is definitely going to be interesting. Uh, and then EV next simulation nodes and so on. So there is a lot to be excited about for Blender 2023. Let me know what you are most interested in comments down below and I shall talk to you all later. Goodbye.